Hello guys, welcome to the second part of this video series on how to read faster files using Python. So for this tutorial, we are going to use Python to read a multi-faster file. Multi-faster file contains two or more sequence records and using the BioPython package, these sequences can be read. And so by using iterations, that's the for and then the while loops, analysis can be done on all or some of the sequences in that particular faster file. It's also advisable that when working with several sequences in the hundreds, in the thousands, you, anal you organize your results better if you use the pandas library. So for this tutorial, we are going to combine the BioPython and the pandas libraries to read a multi-faster file and then perform a quick analysis in, of the sequences in that particular file. So let's hop right into it. Now the data set I'm going to use is here on my desktop and I'm going to leave a link in the description box to where you can download this data set. So this is the data set I'm going to use. And so when you come here, the first thing is to make sure you have your libraries imported and called. So I'm assuming that you are free to install the two libraries, BioPython and Pandas. If you have not, you can watch my video on how to install Python libraries. And the link is given in the description box below. We use pip to install Python libraries. So we now import those libraries. So we see from Bio import chic io. And then we see from import pandas. That's the next one. Now we also say import OS. You will use this for an activity later on. But this one comes packaged with Python, so you don't need to install that. Please also note that even though I'm doing this tutorial in the Jupyter Notebook, this tutorial examples can be run in any Python editor of your choice as well. So whether it's idle or in any other editor or even on the command line, you can still run it. The only requirement is to make sure you have the BioPython and the Pandas library installed for Python to use. Let's proceed. So after we've imported the libraries, what we do next is to set the file path. That's what we do. So the file path in my case is this. And it's likely yours might also change. So you need to make sure that you set the right path to it. So after we've set the path, it's now time to read the faster file. So first of all, we assign that operation to an object to a variable. So say seek object is equal to seek io dot pass. Now in my first video, we use dot read because that's one we were reading a faster file with a single sequence record. But now we have multiple records. And so the rule is to use the pass function. And then we specify the file, which we have set in the file path variable. And then we give the file format, which in this case is faster. The next step is to create an empty list, which we say sequence, sequences. I have a video that shows you how to create lists and I also leave that in the description box or you can click it right up there to watch. So after you have created your empty list, we are now going to iterate through the object here and then load all the sequences into this directory, so into this particular container, which is the list. The reason we are doing this is that this seek object will hold the reading results temporarily. And so we want to make sure we now have access to whatever was read permanently in Python. Hence the use of this next 
operations. So the next is to use a loop to get all the sequences into this container or this list. So we say for seek in seek objects. Sequences dot append seek. Okay. Now if you're an advanced user, you can also use MLS comprehension for that, but that would be another um, tutorial. So once we have the set, we now run. So then how do we know that we've read the sequences successfully? We can each find out how many members or elements are in the sequences list. So we say len sequences. So now it gives us five. Okay, so this is where it now gets interesting. Okay, so imagine trying to do an operation an analysis on maybe thousands of sequences, then you can't do it manually. And that is why we are doing this video to make you know how to automate the process. So let's take an example. Let's just take the first record. So if we say first record, we say sequences zero. That's the first record. Okay, you can also watch my video on indexing to know why we are using this approach for getting the first record. Link will be given in the description box. So from here, this record here is now just like you reading a single sequence faster file. Okay, so from here we can issue and get our sequence ID. We can just say first record dot ID. And you will get it. You can say first record dot name. Sorry, I didn't give the correct name. It's supposed to be this way. First record dot name. Another thing, you should make sure you use the right variables. So whatever variables you set, you make sure you use the exact name wherever you reference it. Okay. So after doing this, we can also say first record dot description. And then you get the description here. Okay, so let me use this opportunity to say this multi faster file contains sequences for five strains of Staphylococcus aureus bacteria species. Okay, so now there we have it. Okay. So if we were to perform this same query, getting the sequence ID, sequence name, and description, then if we are to do it manual, we have to do it, maybe we come to second record, we do everything, but we are going to a trace for you to know how the automation is done. But before that, let's even look at the length. We can also find out the length of the sequence. Okay, so let's just say six. Please know because we have assigned sequences here, we don't want to override that data. So we just say first sequence. And then we say first record dot seek. Okay, so that gives us the first sequence. Okay, so if you want to find the length of the sequence, we can just say length first sequence. Okay, so that gives us this particular length. So this one is what we have here. Okay, so 2,911,287 base pairs. That's what we have um, here. Now, we want to automate this process and then do the same activities we've done for all the five sequences at a go. Okay, so let's do that one so that we know how to automate the process. So to do that, you use a loop. Notice when I, I were here, I made mention of four and then while loops. Okay, so we are going to use a for loop. And we even use that example also here as well. So it's the same principle we are going to use. So we will say that for each member in the records, that sequences perform an operation on it. And the operations are what? Finding the ID, finding the record name, description, and then the length. So let's make it simple here. 
so we we'll just find them and then print them so we we'll say for record in sequences then we we'll come here you can say sequence id is equal to record dot id sequence name is equal to what record dot name you can say seek description is equal to record dot description and now what about the length so the length we can just first of all assign a variable called sequence and we say equals to equal to record dot seek and then we find the length which is equals to what len sequence so now we can now display all of them by saying that print seek id comma seek name comma seek description and then length so now let's see how it goes okay so notice how it's doing it for us so we have the sequence id which is here sequence name which is here and then sequence description which is here and then what's length which is also here okay notice i also said if you have several sequences you can make it more organized okay more organized so that um, you, you are better able to handle the results um, well so let's repeat again with this particular one this time we are going to remove the description let's remove the description here okay let's remove it just to make sure we have just a little Let's move that one also here and then rerun the code again. Okay, so this is now the code. We are going to run it again. Okay, yes, so now this makes it much simpler for us. So we now have what sequence ID, sequence name, and then length. Let's also remove the sequence name to make it shorter. then here so we only have sequence id and length okay so that's what we have here so this makes it very very simple to use okay so just take your time and follow the tutorials and then you see what magic you can perform now all these have been done in the python interface what about if you want to save the results this is where pandas comes in and so what we are going to do is to perform the same operation with just the sequence id and then length and now save the output to a file that we can read externally okay so let's proceed with that one so we are going to create two empty lists first which will store the sequence id and then the length respectively so let's create them so let's just say seek IDs is equals to empty list. And then seek length is equals to empty list. Now we hit enter. So when we come again here, we are going to use the same loop here. And then we we'll say for record in sequences. Seek ID is equal to record dot ID. Sequence is equal to record dot seek. Now we calculate the length. Length is equal to length sequence. We now come and then append or populate the sequence IDs and the seek length with the records that we have generated. So now we say seek IDs dot append seek ID. And we say seek length dot append 
length. Now we can also issue a statement indicating that um, the activity has been complete. So we can just say print analysis complete. Okay, just for each of them. So once we have this there, we now proceed to do the activity. So we run. So notice we, when we run, we have all this showing. Okay, so now they've all been stored here. So what we do now, we can just query, we can just say print seek IDs. Okay, and it shows them when you print seek length. It also shows them there. Okay, so now let's prepare it into a format that you can save with pandas. So we say data frame is equal to pd dot data frame. So there's an empty data frame. So now we're now coming populated column by column. So, so each information here will be a column. So seek IDs is a column, seek length is also a column. So now we say data frame seek id let's use this name you can use any name you want equals to seek ids Then you run. So now data frame would have been created. So if you just say data frame dot head, you can have some quick information about it. So notice how cool we've been able to organize this data. So we are good to go. Now, now we want to save it. Okay. So how do we save it? First of all, you need to determine where you want to save it. So for me, I want to save it here. So I'll define where I want to save it. So I'll say out there. It's equals to slash home slash desktop. That's where I want to save it because that's where the original data was also found. Okay, so I will define it first. And then after defining, I will cd to that directory. Okay. So this is where the OS comes in. So I'll say OS dot ch star. Then I'll indicate the out star. So then where then I can save it with just a file name. So I'll say data frame dot to CSV. And I'll say sequence analysis.csv and I'll indicate index equals false okay so that we don't have these values also appearing let me check the spelling correct here so analysis okay so now we save it so now that we've saved it when we go to your desktop or where you define your out directory it will be there. Mine is on a desktop. So let's go to the desktop and check. So notice it has been saved here for me. So I can open it. And then I'll have everything there. Okay. There. So with this, you'll be able to better organize your analysis results and even plot your, your data if you have them in this particular files, output files as well. And so try as much as possible to reproduce this tutorial to help you with your work. I'm going to leave a link in the description box to the Python script I used as well as the notebook so that you can go and then download them for your own exploration. So I'll see you again in the next sessions where I'll show you how to read GenBank files, calculate DC content, and a whole lot of cool stuff you can do with Python for your bioinformatics data. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.